Uh, so if you are looking for how to create maps in Python using Folium, you are in the right place. Um, so I left a link uh, to my GitHub to basically kind of go over what I'm doing. So, so this is it right here. And uh, I'm gonna use this uh, worksheet file and I'm gonna be live coding in it just to show everybody, uh, you know, the types of maps we're gonna be creating and everything. Um, so using Folium actually has um, a few requirements. Um, and I installed these in a, a virtual environment in uh, Jupyter Notebooks, in a, a Anaconda Jupyter Notebooks environment. So obviously NumPy and uh, Pandas come standard with, with uh, any uh, Jupyter Notebook uh, uh, distribution that you have. But uh, GeoPandas is one of the things that, that is uh, required. Um, so GeoPandas is, is uh, Pandas uh, basically but you can also uh, work with geographic data with it. So, you know, shape files, uh, JSON files. Um, and uh, what it does is that, at, uh, you know, yeah, it, it helps you work with a, with a, with um, the geographic data uh, in basically like a, a spreadsheet format uh, like Pandas. And uh, when you install GeoPandas, uh, Shapely automatically gets installed. And uh, Shapely, is, uh, as the name suggests, helps you work with shape files. And uh, I, I tried to, um, uh, what is the latest version of Python now? I think it's 3.9. I tried to uh, use uh, Python 3.9. It didn't really, uh, it was kind of wonky with uh, working with Folium. So I, I'm using Python 3.6, just in case uh, you need to, um, just in case, uh, you know, you want to uh, use it on your machine. And um, Folium is, is the main package that, that helps uh, you create and store the maps and everything like that. So I'll drop a link from my GitHub down into the chat. Shop's sharing my screen for a second. Oh, it is. Okay. All right. So maybe after this, I'll, uh, maybe after this, I'll start with Python 3.8. And um, so just to show you the data that I'll be using, that's also linked to my GitHub. Keeping with the theme of NYC open data, we have an NYC open data set. So uh, I can drop the link for that as well. Oh, I'm not even sharing my screen. I'm going to drop the link for that as well. And I'm also going to drop the link for the shape files that I'm using. And that comes from NYC open data. So if we take a look at the, the data set. So as we could see, um, this data set basically has um, natural natural gas. Uh, it basically stores information about natu uh, natural gas accounts um, from, from 2010. And uh, if we take a look at um, what's in the contents of the data set, we can see that we get a utility data source that's either going to be National Grid or Con Ed. You know, obviously those are the uh, those are the uh, gas utility uh, companies for New York City. Um, we have the amount of energy that gas accounts are used, and that's going to be in JG and therms. Um, I don't know what JG is, but and, and the, I had to edit this data set a little bit, and, and you'll see why in a second. We have the, uh, the building type, and that kind of gives us an idea of what kind of account it is, and we have the zip codes here. So the first 50 um, rows don't actually have any geographic information. So in these, after you get to row 50, you see that now you get national grid and con ed accounts. Um, obviously you still have uh, the amount of energy used, but in this, uh, in our zip code column, we have our latitudes and our longitudes. And um, I had to, obviously I had to put these in separate columns uh, uh, just so, you know, I can manipulate the data. And uh, you'll see what I did in a second. Uh, sorry, I just need to exit that out. And I think I want to show one one more thing I want to show the uh give me a second I want to show the uh I want to show the shape files that I'll be using so again the shape files come from NYC open data and they're basically the borough shape files oh Jesus okay let's try that again so the shape files that I'll be using are also are also coming from uh NYC open data and they're just the borough shape files um with the water area included for the borough without further ado I'm just gonna go ahead and get started and um get into making the maps so you can actually see some of them because uh, they're stored in the uh in the data set but we're just going to go ahead and import pandas and numpy and we'll take a look at the edited data set that i use so as you can see the uh latitude and longitude latitude and longitude are in two separate columns uh obviously i had to change that from the original data set we have the utility data source and it tells us um where are uh what are the source of our accounts and Again, they're either kind of a, a national grid in, uh, in New York City. We have the amount of energy being used in each account. And we have the uh, building class, which is like, is it an industrial account? Or is it a residential account, um, commercial, and a zip code? But we, we won't actually be using building type and zip code. We'll only be using consumption data, uh, the data source in the latitude and longitude. So get a sense of uh, our data types. 
latitude and longitude of floats. That's great. Uh, and everything else seems to check out. So everything is in the right format. So we're going to go ahead and import folium. Um, so uh, when we import folium, we also want to import our uh, the, the map plugins. And the map plugins, are these are all the types of maps we're going to create. We're going to create a chloroplast map, circle maps, marker maps, heat maps, and uh, a marker cluster map. Um, it's okay if you don't know what that means right now. Uh, I'll explain it as we go on. So we can go ahead and import that. And we get to making our first map. So you can already see what the map looks like because uh, it was already stored in my Jupyter notebook, but we can go ahead and, and populate the field. So the first field is gonna be our location. The location is gonna take in two arguments. It's gonna take a latitude and a longitude. As you can see, uh, our latitudes are mostly gonna live in the mid forties. Our longitude is gonna be in the negative 70, low seventies. Uh, for pretty much every account. But instead of just picking two arbitrary numbers, we're just going to make it really easy. And we're just going to pick the mean value for our latitude and the mean value for our longitude. Second argument is going to be our tiles. And basically, the way you think about tiles, uh, what kind of paint is your map going to use? So so this is a tile right here. And this is a open street map tile. And lastly, we're going to pick our zoom start. And that's going to be how far we start away, uh, uh, how how far we are uh, from the, basically, I guess, the, the zoom uh, of uh, where we start on the map. And that we could just put that at 10. And uh, I can actually show you some other different tiles that uh, we can use. Uh, I'm only going to use, um, for every other map, I'm only going to use, uh, I'm only going to use OpenStreetMap to make it uh, simple. But uh, I'll give you, uh, I guess, three different kinds of maps that you can use. Um, we get someone, sorry, <laughs> Go ahead. someone wants to know what a tile is, if you can repeat that. So so this is a, I, I, it's better if I, I'll, I'll show you in a second. You'll see in a second what it is. But it's basically, this is this is a tile. What I'm manipulating right now, that's the tile. And it's basically the, uh, if you think about it, like uh, the paint that you're going to use for your map. You can just copy that, create some different ones, and create a stamina one. And... We also can add layer control to that. So we can toggle through each uh, map type. Checking my notes, making sure it's right. Okay, and now um, as you see, so these are all different kinds of tiles that we could use. So basically tile is the style of map that you want to use. That's, that's all it really is. And um, these are just four of them that come standard with Folium, but they are literally hundreds of, of different styles of maps that you can use. And I can kind of go into that a little bit later um if you if you guys want to know but the one i'll be sticking to is a uh, open street map i think it's a it's a really nice detailed map and uh it's, it, i think it's a good representation so uh we can go ahead and move on and uh what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and start populating our map with them with the uh, markers from our ordered pairs of uh latitude and longitudes and the first kind of map we're going to make is a marker map and a marker map is literally all it does is it's just gonna put a blue marker for a, a, a representation of where the account is, right? So we already, and we need to loop through each row and uh, place the marker uh, as, it, as it loops through the row. So we already have our, our iter rows method already set up. So to put the markers in, the markers in, we could just say row uh, for, Wait, because I- question. Oh, sorry, if that's okay. No, go ahead. Um, someone's asking, can you use Google, Google Maps as a tile? And um, I was wondering if you could uh, paste the previous code where you made the map um, with the tiles in, in the chat. So uh, in case we're having errors. Yeah, I got to stop Thank sharing you. my screen for a second. And I'll also, um, I'll also give you, I don't actually know if you can, I think you need an API key to, to use anything with uh, Google uh, as far as geographic data goes. But um, I think I do have... Uh, I think I do have something bookmarked about, uh, give me a second. I think I do have something bookmarked about how to actually add a different tile. Okay, so let me go back to sharing my screen. So this this website basically has a bunch of information about, let me move this out of the way. Can can everybody see this as I'm scrolling through? So th this, these are all the different kinds of tiles you can use. And I can drop down the link for that in the chat. And I can go through quickly, um, how do you actually take a tile from this website and put it on your map? But let me, let me get back to this, stop sharing. And I'll drop the link down to that for all the, uh, so you get all the tiles that uh, from there. And I'll show you how to add a different, add a new tile to your map from that website right now. So I don't 
you don't i don't think you need an api key for uh, any of these but let me see so let's pick sure let's pick this one why not so we just copy our tile layer from here and we're going to put that in our tiles argument we go back to this and let's, let's make a different map you just say new tiles so we'll call the map and we put that copy into our tile argument and next oh i must have copied it wrong you know what i don't want to get i don't want to take up too much time doing this if i have time at the end i'll show you how to do it but I kind of want to get to all the maps, but basically, uh, you would you would where the tile argument is, you would copy uh, the tile, and then they also have a, a argument argument called uh, attributes, and uh, you would have to copy that into uh, the argument when you initialize a map. But I, I can show you that later. But either way, so getting back to making the marker map, we could just say iter row, and then we say longitude, and then for each instance, we just say add to add to map one, and we can press enter and now it's going to it's going to add all the markers on our map sorry we looks like we messed up the tiles <laughs> but yeah so now now we could see get a good representation of where our accounts are and uh, and, uh basically on the map uh so there are 964 accounts i believe if we go to the info yeah so there are 964 different accounts uh one of the only things that is is weird with, with this map is um that it doesn't actually create 964 different maps. So if two things basically have the same location, it's not going to make another marker on top of uh, a marker that is already in the, in, the, in the same location. So there is a limitation to it. But as we scroll in, we can really get a good sense of, of where our accounts are located. We have a lot of accounts in Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan, uh, the Bronx, Staten Island. I guess Staten Island is a little bit less po uh, populated with accounts, but we do get a good representation of where our accounts are. But uh, we don't really know, um, you know, are there more accounts over here? Are there more accounts over there? We don't really know. So one of the ways we can solve this is uh, our fix this issue was with a marker cluster map. And uh, just like it says, um, you know, you think about it like a, you know, K means clustering or whatever the case is. So uh, markers that have similar location basically are clustered together, right? And they are, uh, yeah, so they, they are clustered close together. So you, you can get a better sense of where uh, where the locations are on a map and see we can uh, click in and out of it. And as we zoom in and out, we get a really a better sense of where our accounts are. But I'll uh, show you how to make that real quick. So the arguments are pretty much going to be the same. The MP mean, uh, gas, this is going to be our latitude. And the next one is going to be our longitude. and tiles again just open street map and a zoom start we i guess we we want to start a little bit further away because uh we'll be able to click in and uh you know get a good sense of where our accounts are so we already uh imported our marker cluster uh object uh, uh when we imported our folium uh package and uh we need to loop through we need to loop through um our account uh loop through our data set and uh and uh we will use the marker object to uh to populate our marker cluster uh our marker cluster uh, uh variable so it's pretty much the same for idx row and uh gas we want to iter through our rows and we're going to go ahead and say mc add child and the child that we're going to add is our marker so we could just pretty much copy this from here we can go ahead and add that and then after we're done with that we can just go ahead and add child and add our marker cluster object and display our map so uh you guys have already seen this i don't have need to really go through this again but as you click in, you really get a good sense of where our accounts are. So we can see that we have pretty much like in this um, northern Brooklyn, Queens section in uh, Manhattan is pretty much where most of our accounts are concentrated. So as we keep clicking in, we can zoom in and out. We can, uh, you know, really get a good sense of where exactly our accounts are and how many accounts are in each section of the map. And as we keep clicking in, our points get further and further apart until it gets to less than 10, I believe, or 10 or less. And then basically they pretty much all have the same location and are they close enough together where they're not going to keep splitting off into different sections. So with this, I think it's it's a little bit, it tells you a little bit more information than our marker map because our marker map just, you know, I don't actually think this is 964 markers, but then also you get a sense of how many accounts are actually close together and where they're located. But one of the issues with this is, is that we don't actually know where's a national grid account, where's a Con Edison account. Um, we don't really get a good sense of that with our marker cluster map or our marker map. But 
if we move on to our heat map, we get a, a we can actually get a really good sense of uh, where they are. And basically, heat maps are they're not going to give you like a physical like dot representation of where um, of where the accounts are. But they'll kind of like shade in areas of the map and basically, you know, show you where where the accounts are concentrated uh, by basically painting it on the map. But just want to give you a value counts of our and we're going to be able to visualize our national grid and our Con Ed accounts. But um, it's almost a 50 50 split between Con Ed and national grid. Uh, Con Ed has about what is that like 70 more. But uh, we'll, we'll get a good sense of where our accounts are. Uh, just a little preview right there before I actually get to it. So we can just go ahead. This these are gonna be the same. MP mean gas latitude and MP mean uh, longitude. And is that cool? Yeah. And our tiles again. Gonna be boring. Open street map and zoom start again. Is, it could be 10. So how do we populate this? So first we need a way to separate. Because we need, we're gonna have two different, uh, we're gonna have two different instances of heat map, one for uh, our national grid and one for our Conet accounts. So we need to separate our Conet accounts from our, uh, from our, um, from our national grid accounts, and we could just do this with a, uh, with some uh, index notation. And it's utility data source is the column, and we could just say have that equal to national grid, and we also need our latitude and our longitude. So this code is going to represent uh, just our national grid accounts and just the latitude and longitude for our national grid accounts. And the second argument is going to be our radius. Just pretty obvious how much space our uh, our heat map is going to take up. It's pretty arbitrary. We'll just pick 20. And uh, this is actually very important, our gradient. And our gradient is going to have um, taken three different arguments, and it's going to have uh, dictionary notation. And uh, first, you start out with a number. and um, the biggest thing is you can't use the same number for for each color and uh the gradient it, it it takes in three arguments for color so um when i was initializing it here i was i'm a big basketball fan so i was thinking that the the heat and the lakers <laughs> because they played in the nba finals but um I, i'm not going to be too complicated i'm i'm just going to do the same thing so uh for our national grid accounts uh i think the lakers colors are the purple um 0.65 for that um they are yellow and we'll have one for that and we'll just say white. And the last argument is going to be what we're going to name this object. And it's going to be national grid, obviously. And then we could just add this to, we just add this to our map and that's map, map three. So I don't want to type all that out again. So I'm just going to copy that. I'm going to paste Sorry, it here. Sorry, quick question. Can you hear Go ahead. me? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I can hear you. In the gradient, what does what do the decimals mean? Uh, if you're writing the colors, why why do you have uh, numbers and decimals? I, I think they mean, um, I guess, the intensity of of how much you want of each color. Uh, I don't know exactly what they mean, but I do know this. I'll show you this in a, a second. If you do, if you pick the same for each color, I'll, I'll just I, when I initialize it, I'll show you. But it's not going to come out right if you pick the same uh, number for each one. But I'll, I'll change it in a second. So I think the heat colors are black. They are red and they are, I believe they are gold. So you can see how it looks now. And I'll show you how it looks when those, uh, so we have a syntax error. The national grid. I mean, that should actually be conned and in that bracket there, three equal to, okay. So if, if we if we keep the same gradient numbers, it, it, it won't look right. So you'll you'll have too much of one color, pretty much. But if we change it, and I guess create some contrast. Oh, that doesn't look right either. Gold, purple, gold, yellow. Hmm. Oh, okay. I see what's going on. I have to change this to Con Ed. Okay. Now it's now it's okay. So basically, it helps us create contrast for our uh, map, but. So maybe make this 10. There we go. Turn down the intensity a little bit. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so that, that helps us uh create some contrast in, in the colors that we'll be using. So if we take a look at our where our national grid accounts are located, they seem to just be located in Staten Island, Brooklyn, and like this western part of Queens, right? And that, those are just national grid accounts. If we take a look at our Con Ed accounts, we can see that they are located in Queens. This like uh north 
sort of eastern part of Queens. They are in the Bronx and they are really concentrated in Manhattan. Remember that in our marker cluster map. Uh, and also where, I forgot to mention this, where they're more intense is where you'll see like these shades of yellow and like this uh, red coming out. And um, but yeah, you get really get a good sense of where our national grid accounts are down here and where our national and where our Con Ed accounts are right here. So uh, and they're, they're pretty much for the most part separated by borough. But yeah, an, another way I'm just going to go ahead and move on from our uh, unless anybody has any um, more questions. I'm what? Someone's um, wondering that they're guessing that the decimals create a gradation boundary. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't actually know, but I know that uh if these numbers are, uh, you know, if they're too close together or they're the same numbers, then like I showed, they, it won't come out right. But either way, another way that uh, we can actually show this is with a bubble map. And uh, again, we could just show our utility data source. And again, we almost have a 50-50 split. Um, and uh, so basically a bubble map is pretty much like, you can pretty much kind of take the ideas of a gradient uh, of this, uh, of this uh, heat map and um and the marker map because what it does is that it creates like a, a little circular bubble for a uh, representation of where the accounts are so we can go ahead and uh start that and uh so this is this is going to be the same um and um but what we're going to do is we're going to pass in the data source uh for the account uh into our bubble color function so we can pretty much create a different color for uh for what kind of account it is so we'll just say value uh, if val equal to national grid, we could say return purple. Again, going with our basketball thing. And we just say else because there's only one other option. We'll just say return uh, red. And uh, our circle map, we don't need to use the iterals. We could just use a regular, uh, a regular for loop. And we could just say to populate our circle map, our bubble map. We could just say um, location equal to gas dot i location, and i is going to be our row, and you say latitude, and we'll just do the same thing for our longitude. And the next argument again is a radius argument, and for that we could just say ten. Uh, twenty is fine. And for the color, we're going to reference our function right here, so we'll just say bubble color. And then we'll pass in our utility data source. And then we'll pass in the row. And we're going to just add this to our map. And we can go ahead and display that. So again, this is this is just another way of, of showing the same thing. Let me move it over. So as we scroll in, again, we could see that our national grid accounts that are purple, they're in uh, Brooklyn, Staten Island, and some parts of Queens. We have this little overlap area where we have national grid and Con Ed accounts. And our Con Ed accounts are in this part of Queens, Manhattan, and the Bronx. So those are just two different ways that we can get a sense of where our national grid accounts are and where our uh, where our Con Ed accounts are, and they kind of look the same, kind of similar to the um, to the heat map account as you scroll out. But um, yeah, those are two different ways that you could separate the accounts. We we could have did this for uh for this right here, but there's I think there's six different there's six different building classes if I'm not mistaken, building type service class. So yeah, I think that would have been a little bit uh. We had to have six, six different arguments for the color, and um, just for the sake of time, we'll just we'll just stick with that. But moving on to our chloropath maps, so our chloropath maps are going to be a little bit more complicated. It's going to be a little bit more complicated because we're going to need to. Um, sorry. So chloropath maps, uh, basically they they take in shape files and um, they actually shade our shape files, and so you could see like okay, on average, uh, based on the shade of the shape files, on average, uh how much uh, energy is being used in Brooklyn, how much energy is being used in Queens, how much energy, and based on the intensity of the uh, chloropath, uh, of the uh, color of the chloropath map, you uh, you can get a, you can get a good sense of uh, what's going on with the data. Uh, so yeah, it's honestly probably better if I show you, I'm sure some of you already know what chloropath maps are, or chloropath, sorry, chloropath maps are, but I'm going to go ahead and for this, this is where we're going to need geopandas, we're going to need and we're going to need Shapely as well. So I'll just go ahead and import GeoPandas. And uh, the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a Geo series for our latitude and longitude. And what creating a Geo series is going to actually, instead of having our latitude and longitude 
in separate columns. It's just going to store them as one point, uh, one point object. So we can go ahead and for that, we'll just apply, we'll go ahead and apply a Lambda function for that. Let me just say Lambda X. Let me just say, and we already imported point and this point uh, comes from our uh, shapely, uh, our shapely uh, library. So we can say point and we pass in X for, we pass in the latitude. And then the next thing we pass in is the, oh, sorry, the wrong order. Pass in the longitude first. Um, mm -hmm. Brian, to go ahead. Someone wasn't able to keep up, and they're wondering if you were going to be posting the completed working notebook. Of yeah, yeah, of course, of course, of course. And I, I think I already have. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think I already have it up here. Actually, oh Jesus, I think I already have it up here. Yeah, this one that says master key. That's that's the one. But I can post this one specifically. But yeah, so you pass in our latitude and longitude. And it, it'll help us create a point object. And we also need to pass in an argument for our coordinate reference system. Um, this is pretty ar arbitrary. Uh, so we could just say for that, we could just say ESG 4326. And uh, we'll need to make sure that our uh, our geo data frame and our shape files have the same coordinate reference system. And then we can go ahead and press enter. And as you see that uh, it, it actually stores the latitude and longitude in reverse. But as you can see that all of our, and I actually made this mistake when I first started learning this, that uh, you, you actually need to store it as the latitude, as the longitude first and then the latitude. But as you can see now, our, uh, now our, um, our latitude and longitude are stored as a uh, one point object using the uh, Shapely library. And uh, oh, I actually already coded this out. So now we can initialize our geo data, a geo data frame. We can go ahead and drop our latitude and longitude. And now th this is important. Uh, uh, our geo data frame can now uh, store our uh, our um, coordinate points as a geo as a geometry uh, object. So now we press enter and we see our latitude and longitude is gone, but our points are still there and they're stored as geometry uh, objects. Um, I think I need to make sure that my shape files are in here. Let me go a second. Make sure they're in the right folder. My bad. Just a little cosmetic issue. Okay. So back to it. Um, so uh, our if you if you see our uh, our burrow um, shape files are actually stored in a zip folder. So we need to actually extract it out of the zip folder. And we can just do that using um, Python has a package for everything. So they have a package for zip files too. And uh, basically using this code, we can uh, extract our zip files out. And uh, I think the file path I have is shape. So we could just go ahead and say shape and we're going to extract it out into this uh, shape folder. And uh, so, and basically it's gonna uh, take the shape files and store them and read the files out and store them as in this my zip variable. We're going to print out what files are actually in the shape folder, as you can see, it's. I've already been working this already, so you can you can see already what, what files are in here. And we're going to extract all the files out. So boom and hmm, let's see. So yeah, and uh the only the only uh files that we actually need is this is this shape file. All these other files uh we don't actually really need. We only need this shape file. And uh we already is stored the uh all the contents in the uh in the zip folder in this my zip variable. And we could just say, since shape file is the second one, uh, is the second one that in this shape folder, we could just say uh, as a second variable, we can store it as a, we can store it as a second variable and I'll change that to shape because that's where it is in my, um, in my file system. And now, um, yeah, so now we have our shape files and we could just say, uh, uh, we have our shape files as uh, is stored in this uh, variable. And uh, I've, I've already actually done this, but we initialize our uh, burrows variable and we basically just use the, uh, the, the read file method from the, um, from, uh, from the geo pandas library. And hmm, maybe that didn't work, hold on. Okay, so I, I needed to change this right here. Uh, this, this, you also need to, when you say extract all, you need to tell it to extract uh, which folder to extract it into. So now my shape files are extracted into the folder. Sorry about that. But okay, so now we can we can read our uh, our borough shape file. We have our shape file map for Manhattan, Bronx, Queens, uh, and Brooklyn and Staten Island. And the actual geometry of it is stored in this geometry object, right? And now what we're gonna do is 
since uh, our chloroplast map is going to show, uh, you know, it's going to help us see, you know, on average, uh, how many, how, how, uh, how much energy is being used in Brooklyn on at, or, you know, the sum total of energy used in Brooklyn or sum total of energy used in Queens. We need to make sure that when we join our geometries, our shape files and our coordinate points, we need to make sure that they have the same coordinate reference system. So we can see our gas coordinate reference system and our borough coordinate reference system, but just to make sure that they are literally, even though they have the same numbers, just to make sure that they're exactly the same. We'll just add this little space in between, make sure that we don't have any issues. So now this is where the, where the fun comes in. Uh, so I'm, I'm sure that some people, uh, many people in here are uh, aware of uh, SQL style joins. So we, we, what, what we're going to do is sort of like a SQL style join. We are going to join our two geometries. We're going to join our uh, borough shape files to our coordinate points so we can use aggregate functions for our shape files. So to uh, type that out first, we're going to do three different ones. Obviously, uh, the aggregate functions are here to sum the mean and the count. And uh, we we just the first two arguments are our uh, the data frames that we want to join. So uh, and what did I what did I name the the geo data frame? Okay, gas geo data frame. Okay, gas geo data frame. And the second argument is going to be our shape file. So let me store that as burrows. And lastly, I think our last argument is going to be how we're going to join them. And in this sense, an, an inner join works, but you can do a, a left join, a right join, um, you know, just like SQL. And it's going to be inner join. And we need to group by um, group by a feature in our shape files. And in this sense, it just it makes the most sense to group by a borough name because it stores our borough name. So we're going to group by borough name. Make sure I have that right. And it's going to give us the sum total of each of the energy used in each borough, if that makes sense. So we could just do the same thing. This this code is going to be the same for all of them. It's just the only thing that's changing is the aggregate function. We just do that. And this is going to be the same. It just changed the aggregate function. So that one is going to be mean. And this one is going to be count. Okay, so that went through. And if we take a look, we could, if we take a look, um, and the last one was, um, I believe, counts, right? Uh, we only need the consumption terms. Consumption, right? Terms. Okay, so if we take a look at this, right, we could see the sum total of the energy used in the Bronx, in Brooklyn, Manhattan, the Staten Island, Queens, and we could see that Brooklyn is blowing everyone out of the water as far as it comes to how much energy is being used. And I think that's about, what is that? Uh, there was like 973 million terms. Either way, uh, 971, sorry. And we could see that Queens is in second. Um, Manhattan's third, Bronx fourth, and Staten Island fifth. And Brooklyn is also using the most average energy, but, uh, and followed by Staten Island, interestingly, uh, the Bronx, uh, Manhattan, and then Queens. Queens is actually using the least amount of energy uh, on average, even though it's second in the sum total of the energy used. And what's weirder is that Brooklyn comes in third, I think, if you look that Queens has the most accounts followed by Manhattan, followed by Brooklyn, followed by the Bronx, followed by Staten Island. But Brooklyn actually comes in third as far as the total amount of accounts in Brooklyn, but it, it's actually using the most energy and it's using the most energy on average. Hey, Kevin, how you doing? And uh, so, yeah. So now what we're gonna do uh, is we actually wanna get a physical representation uh, using our shape files and using Kevin, you can turn that down. Sorry, my, my brother just walked in. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so now we want to get a physical representation of uh, everything that I, that we just showed and uh, as far as um, joining our uh, gas accounts to our shape files. So I don't need to go over initializing the map again. Um, and I, I didn't want to write this out, so I just left it in. But as you can see, it take, the chloropath takes in a bunch of different arguments, but I'll tell you what each of them are doing. So the geo data is basically, it wants to know what shape files we're using. And we're using the burrow shape files and we have to use this uh, geo interface uh, dot notation. And also the data that we're using for the shape files is our, we, we can change this and we can use different ones, but this one is our, uh, we're gonna see on average how much energy is being used in each burrow. 
And uh, this, I think, is JavaScript notation. Uh, I don't actually know JavaScript, but uh, so, you know, we could, uh, the, the feature that we're using, uh, the feature that we're using for our shape files is the borough name. This fill color is what color our map is going to be, as you, as you can see. And uh, the legend is uh, average terms per borough. So you can see on average how much energy is being used in each borough. And of course, you want to add layer control to that. So we just press enter. And as we could see, uh, as, as our numbers confirmed up here, Brooklyn is using the most energy on average. And our map also shows that as well. Uh, we can, again, we can, we can layer control that. But, and then I, I think it's followed by Staten Island followed by the Bronx, followed by Manhattan, and then uh, Queens. And if we take a look at our legend, we can see that the darker areas are using more energy on average, and the lighter areas are using less energy on average. But we can also change this up a bit. Instead of saying mean, we could say sum, right? And we could just say, change this to sum thumbs per borough, right? And we get a different map because we, we've now changed the data. So again, like we went over before, Brooklyn is using the most energy followed by Queens, followed by Manhattan, followed by the Bronx, followed by Staten Island. And again, we can check our, uh, we can check our, uh, our legend to actually see how much energy, uh, how much energy is being used based on the color. And uh, lastly, we could just say counts. And again, it's going to change. Uh, Queens has the most accounts, followed by Manhattan, followed by, I'm guessing, Brooklyn. Uh, I can't really tell between these two. And lastly, uh, Staten Island. So we, we get a really good sense of, uh, you know, based on the uh, based on the geography of our boroughs, uh, we, we can understand some information about the energy being used in these boroughs. And uh, last map, this is, this is the last one, is uh, I'm going to I'm going to try to create a combination of uh, two different uh, two different maps that we already went over. And we can literally just copy this. I, I'm not going to type that out down here and we can add this to map six instead and uh why don't we change the fill color and change that to green yellow and let's say average change that to average i mean uh i'm not gonna create oh we're gonna we're gonna put a marker cluster on top of a, uh on top of a chloropath but we don't actually need to write out another marker cluster method we could just say uh map six dot add child and we can put map six up there oh not <laughs> not add, add, add our marker cluster object. And the marker cluster object, uh, if we go back up, we already, we already uh, populated that using this loop. So we don't need to do that again. And go ahead and display the map. Oh, it's telling me that green, yellow is not valid. How about flip them, yellow, green, there we go. Okay, so um, there, there are a bunch of different, I, I, think, uh, I think there's also red, blue, I believe. Yeah, so there, there are a bunch of different fill colors that you can use. But um, either way, now we get a, a, a really good sense, this, a very detailed map. Not only can we tell, uh, I think that we used average for this one. Yeah, not only can we tell on average uh, based on the, uh, based on uh, our shape files, um, on average where most of the energy is being used, obviously, uh, like I said, Brooklyn is where most of the energy is being used. You can, you know, read the map and get a good sense uh, of uh, on average where the energy is being used. Um, and but we also have our marker cluster uh, on top of it, so we can zoom in. We can we can get a, a really good sense of uh, of what's what what's actually going on in our in our uh, energy accounts. And these are clickable, so we can go in and out, up and down, left right. It's going it's it's going to change, right? So let's say you want to um, use this map. I'm not going to keep scrolling in and out, but let's say you wanted to use this map uh, for presentation at work, whatever the case is, you want to save it. We could just say map six dot save and these save as HTML files. So we could just say open data map, right? And we just say HTML, right? And that went through. We can go back to our files. We just save as one of these files. Oh, I think I already saved. Let me change the name. I think I already saved it as open data map. We'll just say folio map. Okay. We see it located it right there. We can download that. We can and now we can, on a web browser, we can take a look at our map, right? So if you have a presentation, save this to your hard drive or something like that. And uh, yeah, take it with you. But uh, that's really all the maps that I have. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And uh, I think we have uh, a few minutes for questions. If uh, if you guys uh, would like to ask some questions, I'm, I don't know if you can tell, I'm not a GIS expert, but I think maybe I can point you in the right direction. So yeah, if you guys have questions. Hey, um, so I... 
How you doing? It's hey, Alan, right? Yeah, that's me. Um, okay. So what I'm trying to set up is I haven't done a ton of IPython notebooks before, so I'm not familiar with the conventions for dependency management. Mm -hmm. So I was trying just to uh, install the dependencies with Poetry and launch JupyterLab in that shell, but it sounds like uh, that doesn't install them in the IPython kernel. So like, which way did you install the dependencies you need? You know, we have 10 minutes. I think I could, I think I can install them in 10 minutes, right? That'd be good, yeah. Okay, so just, just to uh, show everybody how I, how I installed it. Um, yeah, uh, so I'm gonna go back to sharing my screen and- um, because this is actually, it, it really, it took me a few times to install it. Too. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's actually, uh, it's actually a really good question. But uh, yeah, let me go back to sharing. dependency management is always exciting, okay. and there's like ten different ways to do it. So <laughs> yeah, like, like you know, I, that's why I, I think I even wrote on my GitHub. That's why I was like, it's probably better if you create a, a whole new virtual environment. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm just going to exit out. I don't need these anymore. Uh, and I'm going to exit out of my Jupyter Notebook. Mm -hmm. And I'll start from scratch, installing folding. Perfect. Uh, come on. Okay. So, uh, mm -hmm. And you just say, kind of deactivate. And, uh, someone wants to know if they, you're still going to show them how to add the tile from Google. API. Yeah. So um let me get started. Um oh, I don't I don't know how to do it from Google API, but I, I could show you from that website how to uh actually I you know maybe someone on Stack Overflow or something like that could show you like specifically for Google API, but I could show you how to add tiles from that website. And uh and uh, let me actually open up another Andaconda prompt. Uh so I'm gonna use this one to install the uh this one on the right to install um folio. So First of all, you want to create a new environment and you could just do that with this command, conda, um, and create a, a new environment. And we just name the environment, let's say open data. And uh, I think I use Python 3.6 for this. So we could just say Python 3.6.12. Um, you're not showing that screen. <laughs> it's not showing like, the, it's not showing the, the command prompt screen. Yeah. What? No. Okay. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna post what I'm actually writing in the chat. I think you might just only be sharing the uh, command line window. Oh, it says it says my screen is paused. What? Um, is that what you're meant to be showing? Right, you're you're showing the the anaconda um, prompt screen window, right? Oh, can you can you see it? Can you see it now? Uh, I can see your command line. Uh, but are you sharing the command line or are you sharing the uh, notebook? Uh, I'm supposed to be sharing the command line. I see it, but I don't. Do you have multiple windows open? I have two command prompts open. Oh, uh, you might be sharing specifically one. Window. Okay, so yeah, which which one can you screen. see? Uh, just the one that I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna have the full screen deactivate. Yeah, I think full screen might be better. Okay, so I, I'll go over how to install uh, Folium, and then I'll go over the tile. So basically, th this is the command for uh, creating a new environment up here, and I will go ahead and let me exit out of that one. Wow, I'm having some Zoom problems. Okay, let me share my screen again. So can everybody see that, the command prompt? We see a command prompt with a description of some directories or something. Okay, so so this is the command that I'm, that I'm using to, uh, I'm gonna post it in the chat. So this is the command to initialize the, uh, this is the command to make a new environment. And the, the name, this, this N means name, and then it just says, this is the name of the environment, open data right here. So back to sharing my screen, okay. So on that, we'll click yes. We're gonna go ahead and install that new environment. Okay, and while that downloads, I'll uh, I'll show the tile thing. Can I, can I also ask, do we have to do this to use Folium or can we just like import the package in Jupyter Notebook or is this, this part required? Nah, uh, so yeah, Folium doesn't actually, it doesn't come standard with Python. So um, you actually need to do this to, to install Folium. Like, you know, you don't actually, you don't, necessarily need to um can, can everybody see what i'm typing you don't actually need to um what am i trying to say yes you, you you do actually need to you don't necessarily need to create a new environment but you do it doesn't come standard with uh anaconda and i don't think it, if you do like a pip install for python i don't think it comes standard either that way so you you do e either if you install it if you install it from um if you install it from uh using the the command prompt using a pip install a pip install or you use 
and a condo to install it, you do need to install it in a terminal, unfortunately. Okay, thank you. But so we could just say conda activate uh, open data. That's the name of our um, that's the name of our uh, of our environment. And now we are in our open data environment. And I think if I go back to um, Firefox, if we go back to my GitHub has the requirements, so we can go ahead and start installing the packages. So uh, the first one we, we're going to uh, go ahead and install is the uh, GeoPandas uh, library. And installing that is pretty simple. We just say conda install geopandas and the version of geopandas I used is 0.61. So let's say 0.61 and it's going to do the same thing. It's going to start looking for the package and it's going to ask me if I want to install, install the package. You could just give that a second to install. Now I'm curious, does anybody actually like use GIS like on a regular basis or like that, like as part of like maybe what they do at work or anything like that? Someone said yes. <laughs> okay. Do, do you, uh, do, do you think that, uh, I mean, type that. Do you, do you think Folium is a useful package uh, for you? I'm kind of, I'm kind of curious. So it's just looking for the package. Okay, good, good. Because I, I think, what, what are the other map making softwares? I know there's like QGIS, I think you can use. And obviously there's RGIS, see, yeah, I was gonna say RGIS, I know is one that you can use, but you know, if you know Python a little bit, you can you can create some pretty detailed maps. Probably not as, as uh, okay, so now with GeoPandas, all these packages come with GeoPandas, right? And what are the, uh, one of the other requirements, if we take a look, um, is, is Shapely, right? So Shapely actually comes with when you install a uh, GeoPandas. So we already have Shapely here. So we don't, we don't actually need to install Shapely, uh, by itself. So we can just go ahead and press yes to that and wait for that to install. And if, if you guys didn't know, if you, if you want to know how to download Anaconda, you can literally just type anaconda into your web browser and literally the first thing that comes up is uh is the anaconda distribution and you can go to uh how do you download this let's say anaconda download windows one wants to know what shapely is so shapely uh helps us store our uh, geometry objects and it, it stores uh, it stored remember when i i stored the um I stored the coordinate points as geometry objects, and then I stored the uh, I stored my shape files as geometry objects. So it, it helps you basically store geographic um, geographic uh, information as geometry objects, and uh, yeah, and so they can interact with each other. So you can go to I'm going to drop this down in the in the chat as well, and so you can pretty much download uh, Anaconda from here and for whatever Windows PC whatever you have. And uh, let's check on our downloads. So, okay, so it just it finished installing GeoPandas. So I, I think I think it can work with with JSON. Uh, I think for a Folium can work with JSON uh, data. I think I have this bookmark somewhere because there is some information on it. Uh, let me see. Actually, let me let me go to the next step of this, and then I'll show that. So, um, so the, the next thing that we need to install is, uh, let me see, what's the next thing we need to install? So we, we already have GeoPandas, we have Shapely, uh, obviously NumPy and Pandas, we don't need to worry about installing NumPy and Pandas, we already installed Python. So we can go ahead and install Folium. So we can't just say, we can't just say Conda install Folium because it won't work, I tried it. I think we need to use the Conda Force channel. So um, let me see. I just want to make sure, I want to make sure that I have the right uh, command how to install Folium. And see, I already searched it. And we pretty much can use any of these commands, but they all need to come from the Conda Force channel. So we can just go ahead and copy that and paste it down into our into our command line. And it's going to go ahead and look for that. Esri maps are generally made in community. I played the math library. Oh, cool. So uh, you asked about JSON, and I think if we go to the Folium documentation, uh, yeah, it has some information about uh, information about uh, working with uh, JSON stuff. So I will um, go ahead and post that in the chat, or I'll go back to the beginning. Oh, I can post that. Okay. So now uh, it's going to go ahead. Now we are uh, Folium package is ready to install. We can click yes on that wait for that to finish installing. 
Oh, wow. That was fast. <laughs> okay. So that's done. And the last thing that we need to do for any environment, uh, very important, you make sure that you have to install Jupyter Notebook or you won't be able to use it. So wait for that to work out. And I have a question. Hey. Hey, so if you already have Jupyter Notebook installed, would you just go through the commands to install Folium? Yeah, actually, let me let me just type in all the commands I use. So I say conda uh, create new environment. And these are the exact commands that I use. So I'm just gonna type in all the commands that I use. And I said, uh, open data is the name of the environment. And I said, Python equal to 3.6.12. That's the first command. The second command I said was conda install uh, geopandas. And I think geopandas is equal to 0.6, let me see 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0.12. A point one, and that also help. This command also installs a uh, folium for you. No, no, it also installs shapely for you. Then the next command is the command I copied and pasted, not that one. The command I copied and pasted from um, the how to install folium in Anaconda because it, the command is a little bit different. So this command is the next command I used. So that should give you all the packages you need, and then you just say conda install. Jupyter Notebook. Why can't we, and that that uh, that should uh, be everything that you need. Um, why can't we uh download the latest version of GeoPandas to go with it? Oh, so um, I, I think somebody. Well, when I first started doing this a few months ago, uh, the the latest version of Python didn't work for me. But somebody I think before said that the later versions of Python did work. So it, it was it was literally just like a, a cosmetic issue where uh. Python, I think I, I think I had Python 3.8 installed at the time, but it, it was literally just a, the latest version of Python wasn't working with Folium. So I said, you know, I'm going to install an earlier version of Python, but I would say play around with it, see what works for you. But that, that that's the only reason why I did it. But I think, I, again, I think somebody said that uh, Folium should work with the later versions of Python now. But if we go so, back. So GeoPandas go doesn't work with the, so, so GeoPandas dependent upon the Python version? Is that why you were going to zero? No, I, I was saying that Folium, the Folium wasn't working for me with uh, later versions of Python. And that, that was just for me specifically. So there might just be like a gap in my knowledge about how to make the packages work together. So to make it work, I, I just installed an earlier version of Python. I think I, I was reading through like some Stack Overflow stuff. And then somebody was saying that, yeah, if you install like an earlier version of Python, it should work. But uh, yeah, that that's that's the only reason why. It's, it's not because I, I like 3.6 or anything like that. Okay. So we installed um, Jupyter Notebook. And we say yes to install Jupyter Notebook. But I, I think, I, I can't, I don't know if that person left yet, but I think somebody did say that 3.8 should work. So hmm, I'll try it. We'll wait for that to install. How many, I don't know how many people are still left. I'm sharing my screen. Wow, we still got 20, 20 folks. Still got 20 people here. So yeah, what, what are some of the other events that, that people attended? Because I actually, I wasn't even, actually, I, I didn't even intend any other events, unfortunately. I don't know if, if anybody wants to speak, but we have to wait for this to, oh, it's, it's already done. Okay, it's done. Uh, is it? Okay, wait, let's see. If we say Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so we have our Jupyter Notebook running. Uh, let's go and open up. So our Jupyter Notebook is, is, is using our new environment. So we initialize Jupyter Notebook in, in the environment that we just created. You're not and, sharing uh, your screen, though. We can't see your screen. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me go back to sharing my screen. Um, okay, can everyone see my screen? Okay. So Thank if we okay, so if we take a look, we are in. We initialized, um, we initialized Jupyter Notebook in our open data. Um, we initialized Jupyter Notebook in our open data environment. So we, this is the environment we literally just created. So import NumPy and Pandas, import our gas accounts. We import our folium, everything checks out. And now we can initialize our map. And there we are. We toggle through our maps, all the different kinds of maps we created. And now somebody asked me about how to, um, somebody asked me about how to uh, get a tile. Uh, so I did, so I, cause I was wondering about this too. So this, uh, oh the, yeah, I wanna stay on the page. Uh, we can exit out some of these. So um, we can go to this website that has a bunch of different tiles for us to use. I will again, drop this down so i'm gonna say the jennifer uh so i'm gonna go back to sharing my screen so we we have a bunch of different tiles that we can use from uh from this website 
again, I will drop the um I will drop the uh so this this leaflet website uh has uh basically all uh, all the free tiles that we can use. So I'll go back to sharing that. So basically let's let's look for a um tile that we can use. How about this one? This one has some nice geographic features. We can clearly see the more mountainous regions. So uh that should be a good one. So we go to this uh section where, where it says plain javascript and we want to copy this first uh this first address and that's going to have our tiles so basically in the argument that says tiles we'll go ahead and drop that in there and that goes as a string and then the next argument um hold on i just want to make sure that i get the argument right uh let's see folio uh, map okay and the next argument that we would use okay is the uh attribute so exit out of that so um we can attribute argument and you'll see where we get that from so this attribution argument is what we're going to be looking at so we'll copy that it's really long and we'll paste that add a comma and as we can see now we have our now we have our different uh tiles loaded to the map so yeah i, I would say that if you want to have some different tiles, some of them, some of them I tested out actually didn't work for me. But uh, you know, you could check this website out. Like if you want to have a, a particular type of uh map, you know, they have all different, all different ones. As you can see, the the water on this one is on fire. So <laughs> maybe you want to check this one out. But uh, but yeah, uh that that's uh that's how I would say is is the best way to um get some different tiles um any more questions oh so you learned how to read files into google collab and plotted subway line what that is so cool i would love to learn how to do that wow that's amazing that's great okay uh i think we're like 15 minutes over time i wanted this this i'm gonna stop sharing my screen all right thank appreciate you. for everybody for coming even out even though i'm not in new york city i'm in north carolina but i learned a lot so thank you so much i got family down there thank you <laughs> <laughs> So I enjoyed it. So I hope everybody has a great rest of their weekend. All right, you too.